What's up everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video talking about my experience with the Moto Z, the budget Moto Z Play, and most importantly, the Moto Mods. I will tell you right away that this is without a question the best attempt at modular technology to date seen on a smartphone, and although we did see LG take a stab at this earlier this year, it really wasn't executed nearly as well as what Lenovo has done here with the Moto Z line, where I would describe it as full modularity and many of the components were available for purchase at launch. I just received my unit a few weeks ago as Canada got it quite late compared to the US, but I really enjoyed my time with everything so I'm going to start out by talking about the Moto Z and the Moto Mods before going into a quick overview of the Moto Z Play which is the budget version of this phone. The Moto Z is one of the most beautiful phones I have seen to date. Beginning with the specs, you have everything that you would expect out of a flagship including a 5.5 inch QHD display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and on the inside you will have a Snapdragon 820 processor paired up with 4 gigs of RAM. The front of the phone is very simple and flush and on the bottom you will find a fingerprint sensor as well which works very nicely. One thing you're going to notice though is this phone is extremely thin, coming in at just 5.2 millimeters. With that though, you might want to keep in mind that the battery is only 2600 milliamp hours to counter for the thickness, and by no means is that terrible, but if you need more battery life, they also sell attachments that give you the extra juice. The device feels incredible in the hand, and I just can't get over how good it looks. But one thing I wasn't a big fan of was the way the back of the phone looked, so I put on a carbon fiber D-brand skin, and I think it looks incredible. Since the phone has a flat back, it lays very flush, so if you would like to check them out, the link will be in the description section below. On the bottom, you'll find your primary contact points for the Moto Mods, so the way it's designed is very smart. The series of magnets allow the mods to latch onto the back of the phone, and the camera bump helps it stay aligned. With the incredible engineering to make this phone 5.2mm though, you may notice that the USB-C port is all it can fit. The Moto Z was one of the first mainstream flagship phones to get rid of the headphone jack, even before the iPhone 7. Of course, the outreach surrounding the removal was primarily towards Apple, but if you insist on having a headphone jack, you can also pick up the Moto Z Play which still works with the Moto Mods, as the thicker overall form factor allowed them to keep the headphone jack. As I mentioned earlier in this video though, I will be going more into that smartphone later in this video. One of the first things I noticed when I turned on this phone was just how good the display looks. It is an AMOLED display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and the screen size is 5.5 inches. The colors really do pop and at 535 ppi it is extremely sharp. Another thing I really enjoyed about this phone was just the way it felt in the hand. It didn't feel overly large being a 5.5 so it was totally usable for me. The only ergonomic complaint I had was that all three buttons are located on the right side of the phone, making it quite hard to reach because they are placed quite high, and for some weird reason, the spacing between the volume rockers and the sleep-wake button is exactly the same. But while we're on the basis of hardware, let's go ahead and talk about the Moto Mods, which I was originally going to talk about later in the video, but I was just too excited and I want to get right into it. Lenovo has teamed up with quite a few companies to make these mods, and it's great to see that at launch there is quite a few available. Currently, you can pick up a JBL sound boost speaker, a Moto InstaShare projector, a Hasselblad TrueZoom camera attachment, the Incipio off-grid power pack, and a series of Moto-style shells. These start anywhere from $20 American and go all the way up to $300. Thankfully, I was sent one of each, so let's start out by taking a look at the InstaShare projector. The InstaShare projector comes in at $300 and allows you to project up to 70 inches on any surface. This is definitely one of the attachments I was more excited about, and it projects at an 854 by 480 resolution, so it isn't anything crazy, but pretty impressive considering it attaches to your phone. It uses DLP technology and has a contrast ratio of 400 to 1, and really all you have to do is mount it to the back of your phone and turn it on and it will start projecting anything that is on your Moto Z screen. By pressing the power button once, it will bring up a menu on the screen that allows you to control the perspective and the brightness of the projector, and on the other side you will find a focus dial. From here, just set the projector to any angle using the built-in kickstand, and you are able to start viewing anything that is on your Moto Z screen right away. As I had expected, the video quality isn't anything impressive. The colors are okay at best, and at 70 inches you're definitely going to be pushing the boundaries in terms of watchable quality, as it is only a WVGA resolution. That being said, if you plan to go camping or on a road trip, this is a great solution and it is the easiest way to share whatever's on your screen and any form of media you have loaded on your phone. But the premium price of $300 for most people just isn't going to be justifiable and I also noticed that the battery life really wasn't that good as well. 
I was only able to get about 30 to 40 minutes of playtime, so I definitely recommend you bring an external battery pack if you plan to use this quite a bit. Nevertheless, it was really fun to use and I think it is a cool concept. My second favorite Moto mod is a sound boost speaker that they teamed up with JBL to make and this comes in at $80. It is a speaker intended for those who plan to take this out to a party or the beach to have a speaker that they don't have to carry externally. It consists of two speakers at a 27mm diameter bringing stereo sound and each speaker is 3 watts. The sound projection is about 80 decibels and it has a 1000mAh battery built in. There is also an integrated kickstand which I thought was a nice touch allowing you to lay it down and watch movies and I think the sound quality is actually very good around what you would expect out of an $80 speaker, so here's just a quick test in comparison to the built-in speakers of the Moto Z. Like a kid and a teddy bear, like a leaf blowing in the air. Could you carry me? Could you carry me? Like a flag after a war, when you're gone and when you're first born. Could you carry me? Next up is a Hasselblad True Zoom camera which brings 10x optical zoom and comes in at $300. This is a full on camera attachment that is reminiscent of a point and shoot that overrides the camera on your Moto Z. It has a 1 2 3rd of an inch CMOS sensor and captures images at a 12 megapixel resolution. What you're probably considering this camera for though is the optical zoom and at 10x it is pretty much what you would expect out of a typical point and shoot and that's the way it looks. It has an aperture range of f3.5 to 6.5 and although it looks pretty cool on the phone you might have seen some videos already about this camera attachment it is extremely disappointing in terms of the overall performance and quality. The first thing I noticed from taking a look at the samples of the true zoom is the purple hue to it. At 5x and 10x zoom you're going to get some unparalleled results when compared to your smartphone but in the end it isn't anything that impressive considering it costs $300. The colors were often bland and overexposed but perhaps the worst thing was the focusing where I had to use a tripod for all of these images as my handheld results were virtually unusable. Of course, when you compare the results to the Moto Z, at 5x and 10x the Hasselblad True Zoom is significantly better. Once again, you notice that the image is overexposed and rather bland, but unless you absolutely have to take some wildlife photography on your phone, it makes it very hard for me to recommend the Hasselblad True Zoom at $300. As you can probably tell, I had a lot of fun using some of the Moto mods, but something that is also great about this phone is the software experience, and I personally enjoyed it a lot. The phone itself runs Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, but Lenovo has already announced plans to upgrade the entire Moto Z line to Android Nougat. One thing that is very characteristic of Moto devices is the fact that it is pretty much a version of stock Android. All of the elements and the animations correspond with it, and aside from a few additional features here and there, for the most part it is stock Android, so you should expect to get many of the updates sooner than other smartphones. Everything was very smooth to use, and with the beautiful display, I just enjoyed the overall experience both on the software and hardware front of the Moto Z. 4GB of RAM is plenty for multitasking, so the overall software experience of the phone is just very universal, and the majority of people are going to like it. On the Moto Z, you're going to find a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with an f1.8 aperture, laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, and a dual LED flash. This also has the ability to record 4K video, and the front you're going to find a 5 megapixel f2.2, 1.4 micron pixel size front facing camera. Image samples from the Moto Z look pretty good, slightly on the underexposed side here and there, but relatively good dynamic range, good enough sharpness, and really my only complaint is that the images are overprocessed and oversaturated slightly in a bad way. Front facing camera was mediocre, being able to capture a pretty wide field of view for the most part, but the exposure was rather inconsistent. 4K video recording on the Moto Z is pretty good as well, but it is once again quite oversaturated and overprocessed. Nevertheless, the image is still sharp and the optical image stabilization is better than most phones I have used. Despite my worries about the battery life for a number of reasons including a 5.5 inch quad HD display and the fact that the battery is at 2600 mAh due to the thinness of the phone, I was actually pleasantly surprised that I was able to get about 3 quarters to a full day on a single charge. Obviously having a thin phone is nice, but battery is still going to be the most important thing. 
If battery is still an issue though, the Incipio off-grid offers 2220 milliamp hours of additional battery, and it is something that you can attach to your phone at any time and just have it in your backpack fully charged. But with all that being said and done, there is still one more smartphone to talk about and that is the Moto Z Play. This is a budget version of the Moto Z and I wouldn't describe it as a less superior smartphone, but something that is different. Some of the differences on paper include a 5.5 inch 1920 by 1080 resolution display, a 16 megapixel rear facing camera, 3 gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 625, and a 3510 milliamp hour battery. So you have a phone here that is very solid in the spec department, costs a little bit less, and you're also going to have a better battery life as a result of the larger capacity and the Full HD display instead of Quad HD. The Moto Z Play weighs in at 165 grams compared to 136 on the Moto Z, so it is quite a bit heavier, but that is certainly to be expected with the thickness of 7mm compared to 5.2mm. I'm here to praise Motorola once again in the execution of the Moto mods, and that is because they are universal. By making the footprint of the Moto Z, the Z Play, the Force, and the Droid identical, the Moto mods are completely universal and can be attached to any version of the device and work seamlessly. One thing that I mentioned earlier in the video is that the Z Play keeps the headphone jack while due to the thickness of the Moto Z, there is no headphone jack, so you're going to have to use an adapter for that. In the end, I think it will come down to personal needs and preference. I'm someone who is really appealed by the look of the Moto Z, it is just irresistibly beautiful. Although there are a few sacrifices that come along including a less superior battery life, the lack of a headphone jack which is something I've already had to get used to on my iPhone 7s, but for a lot of people who aren't as appealed about the look of the phone, the Moto Z Play variant will be the right choice for you. But this video has gone a long time now and a huge thanks to everyone who has stuck around to the end. To sum things up, both the Moto Z and the Moto Z Play are great smartphones by themselves. That being said, it would be a huge shame not to take advantage of the Moto Mods as Lenovo has done a tremendous job implementing them here. Although they're on the expensive side now, only time will tell as to whether or not Lenovo will move forward and continue to make mods for the Moto Z line and future phones. But a huge thanks goes out to them for sending us out for review, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as it took a lot of time to construct, and I'll see you all in the next video.